I came across a video going against the current scientific understanding that birds evolved from earlier dinosaurs. Let's see what they have to say. A new species of dinosaur has been found. Scientists are calling it Changiraptor yangi, the biggest feathered dinosaur ever discovered. I'm not sure where you're getting this information from. The feathered Uteranus huali was a cousin of the T-Rex and weighed an approximated 1,400 kilograms. The Changiraptor yutani was estimated to weigh about 4 kilograms, so was not the largest species of feathered dinosaur by a long shot. At its discovery, the Changiraptor was the largest four-winged dinosaur, meaning it had gliding feathers on its fore and hind limbs, and it had the largest feathers at almost a foot long. But larger feathered dinosaurs that were definitely not birds had been found before it. Here at Creation Moments, however, we're calling it a feathered bird. Just a slight quibble here. Birds are dinosaurs. In the same way that I'm an ape and this is a feline, birds are classified as theropod dinosaurs. Even I've made that mistake in the past. In an earlier video, I said that dinosaurs were extinct, but their descendants had moved on. But to be technically correct, the best kind of correct, birds are dinosaurs. Ah, but you were about to disrupt the scientific consensus with, I'm assuming, some kind of evidence? For one thing, dinosaurs and other reptiles have scales, which are folds in their skin. No, that's not what scales are. Scales are not folds in the skin, but rather plates growing out of the skin. Reptile scales are made of keratin, which, surprisingly, is the same substance that makes up feathers. Hmm. Birds, on the other hand, have feathers, which grow out of follicles. Scales and feathers are completely different. Not necessarily. Placodes are patches of skin which cause hair in mammals and feathers in birds to develop. Now, it used to be believed that since these placode patches were not found in reptiles, hair and feather creating placodes would have had to evolve separately in what would become birds and mammals. This is unlikely, but not unheard of. However, recent studies involving modern reptiles like crocodiles show us that reptiles actually do produce placodes as well. This gives us a new understanding as to how feathers, scales, and hair can evolve from the same common ancestor. Yeah, thanks for that. No known fossils, in fact, provide evidence of a transition from scales to feathers. Even if the transition from scales to feathers was not shown, as soft tissue is notoriously hard to fossilize, it has been proven that dinosaurs did have feathers before the evolution of birds. Examination of velociraptor fossils shows evidence of quill knobs, which are points where feathers are anchored into the bone for support. There are numerous theories as to why the protobird dinosaurs would develop feathers, the most common being heat regulation and insulation, or possibly colorful sexual displays. My paleontology professor back in the 90s liked to bring up the hypothesis that they formed the feather shape we know originally as a net to catch things like bugs. Furthermore, for a dinosaur to evolve into a bird, it would need to develop hollow bones, and it would need to gain powerful flight muscles and develop a new heart with four chambers rather than three. Okay, let's break these ones down next. Studying various fossils have shown that some dinosaurs, like birds, had hollow bones. Ancient theropod bones have been found with sectional areas where the bones themselves were used to help deliver oxygen to areas of muscles. Now, if a protobird started to develop the ability to glide or fly, it makes sense that these hollow areas of bones would expand to allow for a more efficient flying creature. In the same way, existing muscle structures would grow to allow more powerful flight, giving these creatures an advantage over their less evolved relatives. Additionally, Dinosaurs did not have to evolve four-chambered hearts when they adapted into birds. Like feathers, dinosaurs had them already. Computer tomography was done on a fossilized Thescalosaurus with a preserved heart. The shape and iron concentrations suggest in fact that these dinosaurs originally had a four-chambered heart more similar to birds and mammals than reptiles, and supports the idea that dinosaurs were in fact warm-blooded. This means that many of the features of birds already existed in dinosaurs before they evolved into avians. When you consider the actual fossil record, dinosaur to bird evolution is nothing more than a flight of fancy. It's not a flight of fancy, but rather soaring with the evidence that has been uncovered. Thanks. Oh. 
all the points that were brought up could have been easily checked out in publications that were available before your video was created. And considering the fossil record, it's quite obvious to see the gradual and understandable progression from this to this. Well, everybody's heard about the bird. Bird, bird, bird. Bird, bird, bird. Bird, bird, bird.